And now, the general weather around Alaska. Happy solstice, everyone, and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Sunday, December 21st, 2025. And the winter solstice has been very frigid, especially across the eastern mainland, along the Alcan border into northwestern Canada, thanks to Arctic high pressure that is centered over the Yukon. And that feature will hold early in this week. Meanwhile, we're getting a front coming in along the west coast that's spreading snow all along there and uh, snow and blowing snow. We have winter storm warnings, blizzard warnings in effect for areas of the west coast that'll be spreading into the interior for Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday. And then it's looking like after Christmas, around Friday, Saturday, between Christmas and the new year, there could be a pretty strong low pressure moving into the Gulf that's going to have a ton of moisture with it that could lead to heavy snowfall along areas of the Gulf Coast into the Panhandle for a prolonged event, at least potentially. And these below normal temperatures are going to persist into the early New Year, especially once that low gets established in the Gulf. That's going to turn much of the mainland quite frigid in the normally cold spots in the eastern mainland and into uh, the areas over the Yukon are going to be really cold. So looking at what we got going on out there this Sunday afternoon, whales up there at the Bering Strait, blizzard conditions, a blizzard warning in effect there, 18 degrees. You can see that snow whipping around. Fairbanks, clear, very cold, 36 below zero there as viewed from Esther Dome. And then Toke, clear and frigid, 45 below zero. Some of the normally cold spots around like Toke, Northway, Dawson City in the Yukon could see low temperatures somewhere around 55 below to even near 60 below zero. That's the air temperature, no wind chill there because that high pressure is just going to stay put here for the early uh, part of the week. Eldred Rock there along Lynn Canal, very windy and very cold. Six degrees, you have some steam fog. You can see the, the water there. Winds have gusted to over 60 miles an hour, uh, giving those cold outflow north winds down the length of Lynn Canal and a number of locations uh, in uh, the Panhandle, especially northern Panhandle, experiencing high winds on this uh, Sunday. So first off to the west, we have blizzard warnings, Point Lay down to Point Hope and uh, Shishmaref whales down to uh, uh, Port Clarence and, and uh, Teller. These areas will continue to see blizzard conditions tonight into Monday morning. Meanwhile, as the snow spreads inland, not quite blizzard conditions, but you'll have snow and blowing snow, several inches of snow expected tonight and uh, into the day uh, Monday, including the southward facing slopes of the Brooks Range, so Red Dog Mine up through the Noatak Valley, uh, Ambler, Shugnuk, and then down through Kotzebue and along the east side of Norton Sound. And that area of snow will be spreading east-southeastward inland as we go between Monday and Wednesday because there's going to be another system come in, bring in another reinforcing shot of moisture and it's going to force a front to just gradually push southeastward. And the irony is even though technically it's a cold front, it's actually going to cause temperatures to moderate over the central interior here as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday leading right up before Christmas. But several inches of snow could fall around Fairbanks, especially in the higher terrain north and east of Fairbanks and extending westward uh, to Tanana, uh, Nanana, and up along uh, the north side of the Alaska Range. And that certainly could cause some travel delays uh, along areas of the highway system there in the interior. Now, Areas uh, to the north and along the Alcan border under a cold weather advisory that extends southward into the Copper River Basin. We have extreme cold warnings for the northeastern Gulf Coast, northern Panhandle and down around Petersburg, just to the east of there, all because of strong winds causing sub-zero wind chills. And we've had strong winds coming down like the length of Chatham Strait and Lynn Canal. We've seen winds uh, gusting over 60 miles an hour, just those cold outflow winds. Juneau area downtown still under a high wind warning until mid-morning Monday. Those Taku winds uh, gusting at times up uh, around and over 60 miles an hour. We also still have strong winds coming down out of the Copper River Basin, out of the Copper River Delta. There is a wind advisory for the lower Matsu Valley, including Wasiller Palmer and Thompson Pass until early evening 
this Sunday. And looking on the satellite imagery, we have weak low pressure uh, just south of the Gulf into the North Pacific. And then here out to the west, we have a front that's pushing into the west coast bringing snow. But back here to the west, there is a very strong wind feel, not just aloft at jet stream level, but coming down through mid-levels and near the surface. And it's bringing in moisture along the west side of the state. So there's going to be at least a couple different waves of low pressure and fronts that move into this region here uh, early in the week that's going to provide the snowfall that spreads inland, especially along north of the Alaska Range. And then eventually, later next week, right after Christmas, we're going to have low pressure lift out of the Aleutians and then come northeastward and that energy is just going to sit over the Gulf later in the week around Friday and Saturday. Uh, that could lead to some very heavy snows into areas of the Panhandle and along the Gulf Coast. And what that will serve to do is pull down even colder air across the mainland here to just prior to the new year. So looking at this. Uh, Surface weather map, weak low pressure down here, North Pacific with a trough lagging back into the Gulf uh, later tonight, early on Monday morning. We have 1042 millibar high right over the Yukon. Again, some temperatures in the Yukon around Dawson City will be 55 below zero quite easily. A few spots even flirting with 60 below. We have low pressure crossing far eastern Russia up through the Bering Strait late tonight and early on Monday. This pseudo weak warm front has enough moisture with it that it has a band of accumulating snow and gusty winds creating blizzard or near blizzard conditions along areas of the coast. And for Monday afternoon that low comes into the Seward Peninsula begins to weaken. There could even be a little bit of mixed precipitation down through the lower Yukon, Kuskokwim Delta, a little bit of freezing rain or sleet trying to mix in. There's another low back out here along the Kamchatka Peninsula. It's going to be heading up toward the lower Chukchi Sea later Tuesday. We have a couple lingering troughs of low pressure out over the Gulf. And then here we have high pressure up over the centered over the Yukon. Again, facilitating uh, just clear, calm, very cold conditions with air temperatures between 40 and 60 below zero. So by Tuesday afternoon, that next low comes up into the Chukchi Sea, another little warm front pulling inland, bringing some more moisture, and that will overspread areas of the central interior Tuesday into Wednesday leading up to cr before Christmas Day. And then there's energy off to the southwest that will eventually be pulled northeastward. So by Wednesday, Christmas Eve day, we still have high pressure over northwest Canada, maybe slightly the center, slightly further east, southeast, but not much. This front is going to pull what remaining moisture and snow is in the interior and kind of weaken, waiting for this system to come up into the Gulf as we get into Friday and Saturday next week. And that's what could get things going again, because like I've shown you before, when you get a large low pressure circulation over the Gulf with cold Arctic high pressure to the north and northeast. That sets up the conditions for one, heavier snowfall, northeastern Gulf Coast in the Panhandle, but then really allows the Arctic air to overtake the mainland and northwest Canada. And that looks like that'll be the case just prior to and lingering well into the early new year. So temperatures tonight, some places are going to be 50, 55 below. Can't rule out an isolated 60 below reading, but certainly coming close. We still have the strong outflow winds uh, in the northern panhandle. We have wind chill, you know, extreme cold warnings for low, low wind chills. Some of them 20, 30 below zero here in the northern panhandle and around zero in the southern panhandle. Air temperatures five below Juneau, seven below at Skagway. And as we look out toward the west coast, tw temperatures bumped up to 28 there at Savunga because we have that front actually bringing in warmer air. And along the Aleutian chain lows uh, above freezing in the uh, in the mid upper 30s and then temperatures Monday afternoon, the cold air hangs on across the Yukon Flats, upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile gold country. You're still gonna see temperatures fail to get above 40 below zero for highs. Uh, but out to the west, we get temperatures back up just above freezing at Savunga, uh, Macoria, and down here around Kipnik and uh, approaching Bethel as that front comes in. But you're gonna have accumulating snow in this region of the west coast, just trying to spread inland. And then uh, tomorrow night, still very cold temperatures, Yukon Flats, Eagle, Northway, Toke, Dawson City. Again, you can see low temperatures, I think could even be the colder night come Tuesday morning in through this region, some areas 55 to 60 below. And then out here toward the west coast, we see readings uh, slipping off below freezing again into the 20s. And then high temperatures on Tuesday afternoon, 
Notice we got a few readings up along the lower Yukon Delta, Kuskokwim Delta, around or just above freezing, 32 there at Savunga. So there's, as I mentioned, that other low that's going to be coming up into the lower Chukchi Sea with another shot of moisture that's going to spread more snow into the central interior prior to the Christmas holiday. Temperatures trailing out along the Alaska Peninsula. Eastern Aleutian should manage to get back up into the lower 40s. But this tells the story, something I've been showing you all month long in the pattern we're locked in. We have a very blocked pattern in the upper, mid-upper levels of the atmosphere that doesn't allow these features to break down and become more progressive. That's why we've seen what we've seen, other than maybe just a brief uh, couple of days where we get a front come in off the bearing and then it just serves to moderate temperatures a little bit. But we're going to go right back to the deep freeze here just prior to the new year, and that will likely continue past the new year. The main thing is what I was saying is low pressure is going to establish itself down here across the Gulf, while high pressure dominates the north into northwest Canada. So it's going to allow for some of those cold outflow winds to redevelop across the southern mainland, while areas of the Panhandle, northeastern Gulf Coast, uh, up into the Wrangell, St. Elias Mountains will be getting pounded with some heavier snowfall. I'm looking at the uh, precipitation outlook. Yes, precipitation is expected to average above normal between Christmas and New Year's Day. Uh, out here across the Panhandle to a lesser extent uh, in along the Elkan border and maybe a little more so Lisbon Peninsula up to Ukiavik, but otherwise drier than normal conditions. Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Anchorage southwestward through the Alaska Peninsula down toward the eastern Aleutians.